no matter where we go and what we do check us out Johan still stays my slave <laughs> so almost good afternoon still morning so good morning everybody I'm Mike V this is what we catching 360 I'm not at the dam as I said in the last video I am at a lodge called Sangoma Safari Lodge it's up in the Limpopo province um, really nice place really deep in the bush so it looks really good so I'm here for the hunt and uh, hey you know what like I said I'm a meat eater I had the opportunity to taste some um, Impala and wildebeest yesterday oh, it's good it is good not better than beef but hey so uh, guys you're riding shotgun this is my very very first hunt you can see behind me this is a place we're staying at really nice place and uh, first things first I got to get the rifle set in that's for me so we're gonna go do that now drop your hunt off at a hide I still have your hunt I still need my slave and um, that's it but you guys are riding shotgun thank you very much for watching and uh, if you like it hit subscribe doesn't cost you anything and uh, yeah let's enjoy the ride And this is why you never forget and always pack your trusty slave, Johanne. Please help me, Stephen. Stephen, you have it on right. No, man. You had it the wrong way around. No, I, but I can't get it over my neck. I, I fixed the other one. I showed him how to do that one. But yeah, no, I he doesn't. Just, just put that on there, please. Come here, man. That's what I mean, dude. My fucking legs are too big. Now they're going to go the other way. Right. Is it right? We, we, we need to just develop that. Yeah. No, there, that's fine. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's cool. You see, he does really do everything you want him to, eh? That's what I make. What do I tell you guys? Get yourself a Yuan. Get yourself a Yuan. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to head out to Yuan and them now. Um, this is Yuan's thing. He sucks at fishing, but he's pretty good at this. So they basically guiding me today. And uh, so I'm going to Yuan and his buddy Chris. Chris is actually going to help me uh, with the rifle. So uh, let's go meet up with him. So there goes Mike V and uh, Chris Trollope, he's a PH for the weekend. The bush is Chris and Johan's forte. Uh, they spend a lot of time out here so they know it quite well. Uh, as you can see I know the uh, dam waters fairly well and the river systems. So this is fairly new to me. Chris has just given me a briefing before we head out into the bush itself. Just a couple of safety tips explaining the animal tracks to me, what to look out for, what not to worry about and uh, just going through the basics and as that day went on I learned that those pair of shoes that I was wearing is a completely wrong pair of shoes for the bush that is a lesson that was hard learned time to test the rifle okay. the target is set at 80 meters so I'm just testing the rifle making sure that everything is set up correctly that the sights are aligned did find I was a little bit uh, shaky and unstable in the beginning. But the more shots I did, the better it got. I did find that I was a lot more stable and accurate on the tripods. Alright, so that was just basically okay. setting the rifle in. <laughs> Looks like I am fairly okay with it. So my shoulder's moving a bit, so it is a bit iffy from my side. But uh, Chris, are you going to shoot now? No. Oh, I thought you were going to go for it. No, no, no. Okay, let's go. Okay, got all the gear. He has Johan's bow and arrows. It was archery hunting kit. So this is Johan's, uh, this is his... His profession, like fishing's mine. It's my forte. It's his forte, so there we go. So yeah, we're gonna get into the to the car now and uh, head out. And um, Land Cruiser. You guys are coming with, so let's see. Thank you, keep it 
Enjoy your hunt. Good luck, dude. Enjoy it. So just to show you guys, the hunt sitting in a, a hide, or what do you call it, a blind? He's sitting in a, in, in a blind or something. But check it out. You can even see it. There. In this heat, you're going to sit in there. Good luck, dude. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> A quick story time as William our tracker decided to exit the Land Cruiser and start tracking. Right, so the rifle has been set up. I did three shots with it. It's obviously set my eye in. And uh, first things first, I completely understand and I get it why hunting or bush, I suppose hunting clothing is as thick as it is. We walked for 10 kilometers, okay, stalking a buck or trying to find a buck. Or hunting a buck and let me tell you what I get it I was pricked I was scratched those huck and steer thorns they hooked me these things yeah that you just saw you hunt help me put on these gators let me tell you what I honestly thought these were stupid things best thing I've ever bought so I need to tell you the story so after hiking for 10 K's and I mean it was hot there was grass my feet were sore I was tired you'll see in the video our tour or our, our guide our tracker his name is William so let me tell you what this guy knows the bush like the like the back of his hand as we were walking I just see he says stop he doesn't say it he like he like throws signs so as we're walking he's like so okay so I, I follow the instruction so we go go to the side and I'm trying to figure out what he's actually looking at and as I'm walking, I see he stops this way, that way. I see he's actually following the paws and like um, the urine marks that's on the ground. So for you, for you guys that hunt quite a lot, um, yeah, share your story with me. I'd really like to know if this is how it is. So anyway, after our 10k hike, William stops and he bends down and he calls me, puts the sticks on, and he looks and he says. There's a buck, that buck there. So I look at him and I said, what buck, where? I don't see a buck. He says, that one there. Obviously everything's very quiet. He's speaking quiet. I'm still trying to see the buck. So I look at him, I'm like, what buck, where? He says, look through the scope of the rifle. So I take the rifle, put it on the sticks. I look through the scope. And he's like, do you see the buck? He's just walked behind the other buck, the female buck. I look at him, I'm like, William, what are you talking about? I, I can't see what he's seen. Eventually, I spot the buck, the impala. I spot him and I tell him, is he the one that's just bent down? William says, yes, I've got him. So I look through the rifle dead steady i tell you what i zoomed in it was like i got tunnel vision almost it was just me and exactly what i was seeing hold the rifle up and i followed this buck where it was going ready to take the shot i took a deep breath in out lined everything up pulled the trigger So we've been dropped off here now, and uh, well, there goes the car. We're gonna walk and stalk, I'm assuming. And uh, again, this is very new to me. So uh, let's check it out, man, let's go. There goes my rat. So William and Chris out in front, I'm following their every lead. So as we're walking along, I am utterly bewildered with everything that's happening around me. Really out of my depth, 
but following the guys in front and taking in as much as I can. And we happen to stumble across these leopard tracks. Look at the size comparison to Chris's fist. Those are actually leopard tracks. Judging by the size, that can actually be quite a big male leopard. Kind of freaks me out a bit because that thing won't seriously mess up. We're currently walking on St. Gorma's airstrip. Uh, this strip is cleaned up and neatened up uh, when they know the guests are coming in with the aircraft. So we're actually looking for sort of where the animals walk and I have to whisper. So you see where they go and they push the grass flat. And that's kind of what we're following. So, there is a river down here, and we are going to truck into that river. Um, this is really, honest to God, the hardest I've ever worked for, for food. So, it makes it special and worth it. This is where William spotted the herd of Impala. Uh, this is an Impala that I couldn't see. I could not see what he was looking at here. But with his help and guidance, I finally got them in my sights. couldn't see what William and Chris were looking at here. Finally I got to see the Impala. I could steady my aim and track the buck. Can you see his shoulder? Nope. No, not that one. He's behind the tree. He's gonna walk out there. there we go. My shoulder? aim was steady. I had the Impala in my sights. Everything was ready. I needed a clean shot to make sure I didn't injure the animal. So I was in no rush to take the actual shot. A misfire. Let me tell you what. When that click that you just heard went off, those buck scattered. It was insane how they heard that little misfire and they ran. I never knew that an Impala could jump as high as what they could. It was incredible. They were not to be seen again. At that point I thought, you know what, if I was meant to get that Impala, I would have gotten him. But let me know if this is what, what happens. Apparently not all hunts are successful, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. The whole part of it was also not hunting, was not killing the animal, but was actually going and hunting it. Phenomenal, what an experience. So watch the rest of the video. It's basically me walking in the bush, incredibly tired. I had a fantastic time, so thank you to Chris, Sangorma Safaris, and William. You guys are absolutely amazing. In May, I will be going back. I will be trying it again, because like I said, I've had some Impala steaks, and Wildebeest Burevos, it is amazing, really good meat. So uh, I really want to try to get that done. But um, hey, enjoy the rest of the video.
see his shoulder. William tracked down a few more impala for us, but I couldn't get a clean shot and I wasn't willing to shoot and injure the animal and then lose it. William and Crystal have a spring in their step and as you can see I'm dragging my carcass behind me. I was incredibly tired at this point. So you guys heard that click. I had an impala in my sights and literally they say it was huge. Literally as I pulled the trigger it just went click. So obviously the gun jammed up, you know what, maybe just not meant to be. But we spent about a good part of I want to say five hours in the bush it was hot i am tired you guys don't see me do this often but i'm having something to drink it is incredibly hot good news is you did shoot a deer last week and uh we're gonna have well deer meat for dinner i suppose so hey deer meat for dinner i actually watch that program quite good but uh so yeah next up you'll see that you still in the hide they're gonna go fetch him now i don't know his day went but uh, you know it was a great experience, uh, we really walked and we walked and we were surrounded by buffalo, I think, I'm going to say I think, and uh, you know what, good experience all in all. But uh, guys, we're going to have a brine now, we're going to cook some food, we'll chat later. We were all back at camp and Crystal had the energy to uh, make us some deer meat burgers. And we had some deer meat force with that as well. So really good eating, good tasting. So at the end of the evening, we all sat around the campfire and shared our stories. And guys, you know what, that brings it uh, to an end, this hunting trip. I didn't get anything. I don't know if that's normal. You guys let me know in the comments, please. Like, whenever you go hunting, do you always get what you want to get? Like I said, this is my first time. Um, the bush, really awesome, yeah, really thick and lush. But it whacked my sinuses, like, a lot. But uh, you know what, I had a good time. And made a really... Or rather, let's say, made some really good memories, met a lot of nice people. So it was a really good experience. So to you, and the guys, thank you very much for bringing me. Um, in winter, I will be coming again. Uh, that feeling of wanting to get your buck. I understand it. I get it. But guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, as always, take care, stay safe. We'll catch you again.